What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2023 Subaru Ascent Premium. Huge thank you to Tyler Wright over at Stallman Subaru of Sterling, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Ascent or any Subaru product, I'll be sure to have Tyler's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. Jumping right into the video first, let's talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2023 Subaru Ascent Premium. This one so happens to be the seven passenger and the seven passenger configuration is an additional $1,460 more than the eight passenger configuration. Essentially what you get is second row captain's chairs. Now, another thing I wanted to say is that for 2023, the Ascent as a whole did get refreshed styling with a new front grille, new front bumper, and updated lighting both in the front and the rear. Another thing I wanted to say that is also new for 2023 is now you get a 11.6 inch infotainment system uh, as standard again for the 2023 model year. But starting over here with our headlights, with the premium, you get LED steering responsive headlights with high beam assist, as well as LED daytime running lights and standard turn signals but working our way to the center of the front end with the premium you get a gloss black front grille with a chrome grill bar that connects your headlights together so basically you can see that chrome grill bar goes all the way across to that tip of that headlight to this tip of this headlight again chrome grill bar all the way across subaru logo located at the center of that chrome grill bar and then working our way down just a tad bit you get a satin black lower grill it's kind of interesting because it's kind of like three separate grills so you have the two smaller outer ones and then that big uh lower grill there in satin black again at the middle but you also get satin black outer grills on the outsides of your front bumper as well I'll give you guys a little bit of a closer look at that no fog lights as you may be able to tell you can't even option fog lights uh, on the premium and then if you guys were wondering about the ground clearance of the ascent premium you get 8.7 inches of ground clearance but working our way down the side you can see those satin black grills connect to your satin black wheel arch moldings basically like a satin black over fender is kind of the best way that i can describe it you also get a four wheel independent raised suspension as well as these are the standard and the only wheel option you can get with the premium and they are an 18 inch gray with machine face wheel and they are wrapped in 245 60 falcon zx all season tires give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires as best that i can there's another view of the wheel face and then working our way up top here as standard with the premium you get the all weather package uh, which is basically a thing that includes heated outside mirrors the heated seats and a windshield wiper de-icer so i'm not sure how well the gopro is going to pick it up but essentially where your wipers park is a heating element so you're not gonna like in, if you live in alaska you get a lot of ice you get a lot of snow um, you're not going to build up ice on your windshield wipers which is always a nice thing again if you live in a colder climate but working our way into these side view mirrors with the premium you get body color mirror caps with integrated turn signals these side view mirrors are heated manual folding and you get your blind spot monitoring on the insides of your uh, of your side view mirrors excuse me so right there that's your blind spot monitoring and then about right there on your passenger side side view mirror is where you'll find your blind spot monitoring the heating and the blind spot monitoring comes standard with the premium but this one has been optioned with the 285 dollar auto dimming exterior mirrors with an approach light so both of these side view mirrors will auto dim if somebody's behind you at night with their high beams on again both of these side view mirrors will auto dim with that package and then you also get a nice little approach light here an approach light is essentially like a puddle light to illuminate this area uh, as you step in and out of the vehicle at night but let's do a little side profile action of the ascent premium again like i mentioned i really do like this color it's a mix of purple and blue and i really like purple and blue on certain vehicles and the mix of those two colors really works on this vehicle but starting at the top you get black raised roof rails with a 700 pound static load capacity so if you wanted to go camping you know with your three person family or something like that you could throw up a rooftop tent up top here and as long as you guys are no more than 700 pounds again Again, you have to be stationary um, then it will have no problem supporting that rooftop tent and your weight but you also get chrome window trim you get body color door handles with keyless access just keep in mind that the keyless access function is only on your front two doors and then all the way at the bottom down here you have your satin black cladding but working our way towards the back end we'll do a little rear three-quarter angle of the ascent here real quick that is a look at that 
up top here you can see it's kind of blocked by that branch and those leaves but anyway you do get a gray shark fin antenna up top there as well as a body color roof spoiler this is what i'm referring to and then you also get an integrated third brake light in your body color roof spoiler you get a rear glass defroster as well as a single speed rear wiper here's a closer look at your updated taillights for the 2023 ascent and then just like the front the back mimics it with that chrome trim that goes all the way across with your subaru logo located at the center of that just beneath your subaru logo kind of offset it to the left is where you will find your backup camera you also get chrome badging back here as well with your subaru badge your ascent badge and your symmetrical all-wheel drive badge a power lift gate does come standard with the premium so all you got to do to find your power lift gate pad locate the subaru emblem put your hand underneath here press on the pad and the lift gate will open up it actually opens up at a respectable pace as well these are the standard floor mats you get with the Ascent Premium. They are carpeted and they say Ascent on them. This one has been optioned though with the $227 tonneau cover, which is what this thing is right here. So basically uh, you would set the tonneau cover there and there you can see those two little indentions that look like a square. And basically it covers your cargo area so people can't see the contents that you have in your trunk when the trunk is closed. So that's a nice like security-ish feature. Um, so you can skip that option if you want to. This one just so happens to be optioned with that. And then um, tons of storage space back here. So I will, fold the third row seats up so you can see how much space there is with the third row seats up so basically you can see there's probably four feet of storage space with those third row seats up kind of like same uh, amount of storage space that you would find in like the back of a Chevy Tahoe or something like that with their third row seats up but with the third row seats dropped I mean you have a ton of storage space uh, back here so don't fret uh, as long as you only have four passengers you will have a ton of storage space back here however if you have you know seven passengers you're going to be limited on the amount of trunk space that you have here in the rear just to get a little light on the driver side of the trunk as well as a 12 volt power outlet just to the right or just underneath that excuse me i don't know my right from my left and my up from my down but you get a little storage cubby on this side as well one thing that's pretty cool uh, these are grocery bag holders so you get one right there and then one on this side as well pretty cool thing um, and then underneath this if you pull up on this little tab here you get your jack you also get a um, uh, this thing right here I'm not quite sure what that does but I do think that that closes off uh, just like that and then you have a screwdriver you get your tow hook and all that kind of stuff and I'm not sure if you have a spare tire or not under there it's gonna be kind of difficult to open that up with just one hand but anyways cup holders we'll get into that kind of stuff here in a minute but there is one more option that this vehicle does have and that is the 156 dollars rear bumper cover and essentially this is the rear bumper cover right here so let's say you're unloading or loading your vehicle with you know let's say a suitcase for example instead of like dragging your suitcase and you know boom and down on that where it would normally scratch your paint you have a dedicated rear bumper cover here that is literally meant to get scratched so you're scratching this rather than scratching uh you know your uh paint color so this is an option you might want to get i also think that it just makes the vehicle look a little bit more premium with that option as well but again that's a skippable option if you don't care about that kind of stuff but you can also lock the vehicle by pressing that button right there and the vehicle will lock and then you can also press the button to the right of that and then that will drop the lift gate again that is what the lift gate looks when it drops and then there are a couple things back here uh, towards the bottom of your brump bumper so you do get a satin black rear bumper with four integrated sensors i'll point them out that's one two three and four as well as two reflectors one on that side one on that side and a dual exhaust system now if you guys have a boat a side by side or something that you have to tow if you were wondering about the max tow capacity the max tow capacity is 5,000 pounds and then another thing that I think some of you guys will really really like is that there is no octane requirement all you got to do is make sure you put unleaded fuel in it uh, but 87 octane will do you just fine which is kind of interesting because this is pretty much the same motor that you would find in like the Subaru WRX and the WRX I either recommends or requires uh, 91 octane at a minimum so this one again 87 octane totally fine uh, so that is definitely nice let me know what you guys think of the 2023 ascent in the comments down below I 
I personally think that the premium is the best value because you pretty much have everything that you need on a vehicle and a little bit more, but you don't really have any of the frills that you don't need, like the cabin connect, the 360 camera, and so on and so forth. So if you're catching my drift, this is a great value. But with that said, let's move into performance. Pop and open that hood reveals that 2.4 liter turbo boxer four cylinder that makes 260 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. It is mated to a high torque linear tronic continuously variable transmission for a zero to 60 time in 6.9 seconds. If you were wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 20 miles per gallon in the city, 26 miles per gallon on the highway for 22 miles per gallon combined with standard all wheel drive. One thing that I thought was pretty cool is that obviously when you're driving down the road, all that airflow is being pushed into your radiator. However, there is a nice little air intake that collects air from right here and shoves that air right into the top of the motor for optimal airflow. I think that's pretty cool, especially for a mom mobile like this. But if you guys are enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm now on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot get there without your support. So if you've taken anything from this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much, each and every one of my 14,000 subscribers. I know that's a small number in the world of YouTube today, but if you put 14,000 people in a room, it is quite a few people. So thank you from the bottom of my heart to each and every one of my supporters i greatly appreciate it but with that out of the way let's move into the interior moving into the interior keyless access with push button start does come standard with the premium so all you got to do is make sure you have your key fob in your pocket walk up to the vehicle put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock you can also lock the vehicle by running your finger across these two hash marks right here and now the vehicle is locked but again put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will open up now taking a look at the driver's side door panel you can see you get some faux carbon fiber trim right about here you get a chrome looking door handle you get some vinyl wrapping at the top all of this like right here i'm not sure how well it's going to pick up on camera but that is all cloth then you get a nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest with some stitching you get automatic up and down windows in the front but you do not get automatic up or down windows in the back this is to adjust your power side view mirrors unlock and your lock functions and then you also have uh, this button right here to restrict your passenger window privileges you also get a great spot you could set a phone in the driver side door panel i have an iphone 14 pro max and it fits down in there no problem then you get a little bit of miscellaneous storage space down here but this is more used as like a uh, bottle holder or something like that so you could fit like two deer park water bottles towards the bottom of the door panel here on the ascent but stepping on into the interior taking a look at the driver's seat you can see you do get a power front driver's seat let's see if these are adjustable nice the headrests are adjustable you get some nice bolstering uh, there is cloth upholstery with the premium so you would have to step up to a higher trim level in order to get leather if that's what you wanted and then also you do not get lumbar support here on the premium but stepping on into the interior boom you can see what's new for the 2023 model year this big nice screen 11.6 inches it is awesome and it has wireless carplay and android auto but to start up the vehicle just have the key fob in the interior push your foot on the brake and then push to start and that is what it sounds like when it fires up i'm gonna close this door here i'm gonna turn the climate system off because it's gonna mess with the audio so i'll do that now and uh, we'll start over here so one thing I really like about Subaru products is that they're always thinking of great places that you could set your phone. So you can also set your phone down in here as well. So I'll put my 14 Pro Max down in there and boom, another great spot. You could set a phone, some faux carbon fiber trim that leads nicely from your door panel onto your dash. This button right here will turn on all the interior dome lights here in the second and the third row. I'm gonna press that button again and that will turn the lights off slowly. Now they're fading to off. And then this scroll knob here is to brighten and or dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. Then you get a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. Flip that down. And what I mean by tilting and telescoping, steering wheel will come towards you. It'll go away from you. And then it also moves up and down again to your liking. But let's move into this. So this is your headlight control stock, your high beam control stock, and your turn signal stock. So let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. Flipping this all the way down will turn your headlights in the off position. Flip that up one, that's automatic. 
that's daytime running lights on and then all the way up is headlights in the always on position i like to leave it in automatic because i think subaru does a good job at turning the lights on and off automatically you get a leather wrapped steering wheel with some accent colored stitching on the inside of the steering wheel subaru logo located at the center obviously this is also your airbag in your horn so let's take a listen to the horn that is what the horn sounds like on the 2023 Ascent. With the premium, again, you get that high torque linear Tronic CVT, but that comes with an eight speed manual shift mode. So basically you get these steering wheel mounted paddle shifters on the right and left sides of your steering wheel. Left side is to downshift, right side is to upshift. Um, pretty cool, I'll get into that here in a minute. But these controls here, that's to go back on a track, that's to go forward on a track, that's to switch between your different audio sources. This up and this down arrow are to control your productivity screen located at the center of your gauge cluster. And then that is to pick up on a phone call, that is to hang up on a phone call, as well as mute the audio system. And then that is to speak to the vehicle, and then here are your volume controls. As standard with the premium, you get adaptive cruise control with lane centering. So this is all like your uh, adaptive cruise control stuff here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. And then right there is your windshield wiper control stock. Now let's move into the gauge cluster. So on the left, hand side of the gauge cluster you have your rpm gauge and your coolant temperature gauge and then on the right hand side of the gauge cluster you have your speedometer and your fuel gauge down here and then at the center again you have a productivity screen so starting at the top this is your instant fuel economy stuff this is like your trip a information 8.1 mpg if you wanted to reset that trip a information and this uh odometer thing down here you come over here and you press and hold on this trip reset button and then both of those values will reset back down to zero and then right there that is your fuel range that's the digital speedometer readout transmission status stuff trip a information and your odometer again to control this screen you have these arrows over here clicking down one again that's like your uh trip information stuff then that is some more trip information stuff tire pressure monitoring system stuff audio stuff and then that is the time and the temperature if this was my vehicle this is the screen that i would leave it on but moving on over to here again, what's new for 2023 is, is now this 11.6 inch infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. It is quite humid outside, uh, but I can't turn on the HVAC system or it's gonna mess with the audio. So starting up top here, get your hazard button, you got your volume knob. If you press and hold on the volume knob, that will turn the screen off. That's your front defroster. You got a tri-zone climate control system as standard. So that's your driver temperature controls. Those are your passenger temperature controls. This is your tuning knob. If you press and hold on that, that will bring you into the tone setting. So you can adjust the base, the mid range and the fader that is what that looks like there and then up top there that lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off working our way up to the top of the screen you have the exterior temperature so it's really not that hot out but it is just very humid and then that is the current time and then you have four different screens that you can set up top here so you can have your audio stuff on that you can bring up your uh, different temperatures and stuff um, I'm gonna click over I didn't mean to do that then you can click over here you can go into your weather stuff and then all the way over you have your X mode on or off coming down a little bit this is what your home screen looks like you get your radio your media your phone your app settings Starlink my Subaru Apple CarPlay and car info I want to show you what car info looks like because it's kind of cool you have your driving statistics stuff there basically pitch and roll and then you can go in between your different maintenance stuff it lets you know uh, what needs to be maintained which is always nice and then swiping that over to the right you can turn the display off by pressing on that button you can put this into valet mode you can uh, turn auto vehicle hold on or off so if you're stuck in traffic you can push that and then that will hold the vehicle in place by itself with the vehicle's braking system. That's a nice feature, especially if you are in standstill traffic. That's to turn traction on or off, and then you can add a shortcut. Pressing on that button there will bring you into this screen. So that's one of those screens. You can go into your driver assistant stuff and or more settings. Click in that, this is your home button. This will bring you into your connected phone. So right now my phone is the one that is connected. And then you can go in between your different driver profiles. Right now I am in default. This isn't my vehicle. I'll let the uh, owner of this vehicle when they buy it be uh, set up their own driver profile. And then all the way down here, this is to turn your either heated seats on or off. You get three levels of adjustability with your front heated seats. But again, this is your climate control system. If you press right here, that will bring the climate control throughout the entire screen. And then this is what your climate control system looks like. One thing that I always thought was pretty cool about Subaru stuff is that you can either have the uh, air blowing 50-50 on your head and on your feet, or you can do like 75% 
airflow on your head and like 25% airflow on your feet. That's pretty cool. Never really seen that in any other vehicle besides Subaru products. And then again, continuing on with the theme of uh, phone storage space, you can set your phone over there as well. And there's just a ton of storage space uh, above your glove box. Speaking of the glove box, you get a lockable glove box with quite a bit of storage space down in there. So you can fit your owner's manual, the napkins, some straws, or maybe some snacks if you got kids. Uh, plenty of storage space there in the glove box. Another spot you could set a phone right underneath your infotainment system right here. That is what that looks like. And then you also get a 12 volt power outlet down in there as well. Coming down a little bit more, you get your auxiliary jack, a USB-C port, and a USB-A port. You also get a leather-wrapped shifter. So like I mentioned earlier on in the video, you get an eight-speed manual shift mode. So to go into manual mode, flip that over to the left when you are uh, in drive. And now you can control the transmission with the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. But that's what I wanted to show you. This is your electronic parking brake. It will let you know that the parking brake is engaged when that red light is illuminated. If you want to disengage the parking brake, just make sure you push your foot on the brake, push down on that, and then the parking brake will disengage. You also get two cup holders here, which is always very nice. Then you get a nicely padded armrest with some stitching opening up that armrest you can either set some coins in here you could set uh, some hand sanitizer or any small product really that's like five inches and then opening that up quite a bit of storage space but there is no connectivity stuff down in here but i would say about 60 percent of my forearm will fit down in there when the armrest is closed i'm gonna close that that is what that looks like we already walked through that and then the passenger side door panel looks pretty much the exact same as the driver side door panel but one more thing passenger side headrest is also adjustable which is very very nice let's see Okay, so you do get a manually adjustable front passenger seat. It is not power. Thought I might point that out. And then also as standard with the premium, you get an auto dimming rear view mirror with your compass and home link. Home link is basically just your universal garage door opener. So if you own a house with three different garage bays, you can open up those three different garage bays individually with these three different buttons. And then you can also turn your auto dimming rear view mirror on or off by the push of this button at the center and bottom of that uh, so when it's green it lets you know that the auto dimming review mirror is on you also get a great spot you could set some sunglasses up top here you can also monitor your passengers with this little thing right here it's basically like a fish eye type of mirror then you get your SOS and basically like your Subaru roadside assistance buttons up top here this is for your light uh, setting so basically if you want the lights to open up when the door is opened flip that over to the left now when I open up the door the interior lights will turn on However, if I have that flip to the right now when I open up the door, they will not turn on. And then you can also turn these lights on individually for your driver and your front passenger. Taking a look at your visor, you get a clip here. Opening this up, you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. And then this also slides forwards and backwards, which is always nice. Driver side, you get an OPU panel. Obviously on the passenger side, you also get an OPU panel. And the visor on that side looks the exact same as the visor over here on the driver side. Now there are a couple things that I wanted to go over before we moved into those rear seats. So essentially, again, I already mentioned this, but what comes new for the 2023 model year is now the 11.6 inch infotainment system and that does include wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. There are no packages available for the premium. So basically what you see is what you get. You can add a couple accessories like those auto dimming exterior mirrors and stuff like that, but you can really only add like small things like that. There's no other like built-in navigation or anything like that that you can add to this vehicle. But I did wanna go over a couple things that come standard with the premium. So basically you get keyless access with push button start as well as that auto dimming rear view mirror with the compass and the home link functions. <laughs> a couple th uh, safety things, you get reverse automatic braking as well as adaptive cruise control with lane centering, blind spot monitoring, uh, as well as uh, reverse automatic braking, which is always nice. A couple other things that you get, not including like, I already went over the safety stuff, but anyway, you get a power lift gate as standard, you get pin code access as standard, as well as a tri-zone climate control system, heated front seats, uh, and by the way, the seven passenger configuration actually costs more than the eight passenger configuration because you can see you get those second row captain's chairs, which 
I guess Subaru thinks is more desirable. In my opinion, it is also more desirable, but that will cost you $1,460. Now I'm gonna read over some safety stuff. So I'll put the window sticker on screen. You guys can take a look at the safety stuff. Essentially, uh, you get the EyeSight driver assistance system with reverse uh, automatic emergency braking, you get reverse automatic braking, so on and so forth. The blind spot with the rear cross traffic alert. You guys can read over all those different things. Now I'm gonna read over the government five-star safety ratings. You get five stars in every aspect except for for rollover where you get four stars so you know god forbid you get in an accident at least you know that you are in a very very safe vehicle now you can take a look at all the optional stuff and all the standard stuff but basically i'm not just going to highlight the msrp now so the msrp of the way that this particular 2023 subaru ascent premium is spec is $39,848. It is nice to see that you can still get a nicely equipped three row family SUV under $40,000, which, you know, nowadays it's becoming less and less where you can find a vehicle that's nice that you can fit your whole family in. So before we move on to the driving portion, I do want to show you what's going on here in the second and third row seats. So pop it in into these rear seats. You can see the driver or the driver side passenger door panel back here in the second row you get a cup holder whereas you don't get that in the front you also have a spot you could set your phone a very nicely padded armrest uh, and a little bit of miscellaneous storage space for some cups or bottles down there this is what your second row captain's chairs looks like so stepping on in we'll see if they are comfortable one thing that i do know is that you can slide them forwards and backwards to your liking i think you can also recline them as well so Quite a bit of reclinability here uh, so you can make yourself comfortable here in the second row you may be able to tell right now where i have the seat slid i still have a ton of knee room a ton of leg room you also get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat i got a ton of headroom as well i am five foot nine i also am adjusted behind myself you get an hvac vent as well as a dome light and a spot you could set your dry cleaning as well as a another opu panel same stuff goes for that side as well like i mentioned you do get a dry zone climate control system as standard with the premium and uh, this is what your controls for that system here for the second and third row seats look like usb-c port usb a port that is just a dead thing there then opening this up you get two more cup holders which is always very very nice you also get a center fold down armrest with these uh second row uh captain's chairs one thing that's really nice is that you can actually set the height so when you push down on it it doesn't move you see that higher I go it's not moving so that's always very nice and you don't really see that uh, in the second row on a lot of vehicles so that is something that I definitely appreciate here with this ascent so moving on here into these third row seats I do want to fold the seats up and I'll show you how much space I have uh, in the third row. So sitting behind myself, I did scoot this seat up just a little bit so we can kind of split the difference a little bit, but you can see I've got very little leg room here or knee room, excuse me, uh, but I still have quite a little bit of headroom, excuse me, not quite a bit, a little bit. I'd say an inch left over, five foot nine. You get a HVAC vent and a dome light, two cup holders back here and kind of the same thing on that side as well but you know we've talked about the exterior we've talked about the performance and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the ascent premium so i want to see what this thing's like to drive as i'm assuming you guys do as well so i will see you guys in the driver's seat all right now on to the driving portion of the reviewer we always go over these speed bumps at five miles an hour and then i rate them on a scale of one to ten that was about five did very well over the first one let's see how it does over the second and at about five this thing's got quite a bit of low end torque it makes it very easy to accelerate we got five i'm gonna give this thing an eight flat on a scale of one to ten which is a great score uh it just takes those pumps so so easily this thing also rides well let's see how the body roll test is honestly not bad Considering it's a three-row SUV, it actually did pretty dang well on that body roll test. Obviously, there's body roll. It's a three-row SUV. It's not built, you know, to handle amazing, but it actually does handle surprisingly well uh, for what it is. So we got a nice little green light here. Uh, and of course, we got a red light there. Low end torque, 
with this motor is great. Um, it just gets up and goes very, very easily. That's one thing I really like about the turbo boxer motors, whether it be in this, an Outback, or a WRX, um, they all accelerate very, very well. Uh, and they are actually like surprisingly quick. And I made videos talking about how these things are actually surprisingly quick and people like are like, oh, no, they're not, no, they're not. And it's like, okay, well, they actually are. Um, so, you know, can't really please everybody, but here's a little acceleration. You can see it accelerates very, very easily, and that's me, like, not even getting on it at all. Um, just very, very easy acceleration, which is very, very nice out of a vehicle like this, you know. I don't like when I get in a vehicle and they feel anemic, and that's something, uh, that I've noticed, like, with the naturally aspirated Subaru motors, like in the Imprezas and the Crosstrex and stuff, um, especially if you get like the base engine, uh, is that they're just, they're so slow. I mean, not like insanely slow, like obviously they've got enough power to, you know, get you moving and stuff. People, a lot of people just don't really care about having a lot of power. Uh, but I like how the 2.4 turbo is the only motor you can get in the Ascent. Uh, and it has just, it's got, more than enough power that you need um you know i wouldn't say that it's like insanely fun to drive i mean that's not why you're buying one of these but i can tell you that you won't be disappointed with the levels of power uh, that this motor puts out now another thing i wanted to say is that the um sound system is actually pretty good in this you know this has the standard sound system and it actually sounds pretty good now one thing that i always say when i do videos with subaru products is that i wish subaru would make the Harman Kardon sound system an option. So I wish I could pay $800 and I could get like the Harman Kardon as an option, but they don't make it an option. You uh, either have to get like a higher trim level that comes with it, or it comes in like an optional package for like 3000 bucks. So I think it should be like an $800 option where you can just get the, um, you know, the sound system alone. I think that would definitely sell, I think more premiums, but then it's like, well, would you rather sell a premium with that sound or with that as an option? Or would you rather, you know, sell a higher trim level, et cetera, you know what I mean? So anyways, it, uh, that was my little rant for the day. Um, it rides, it drives very nicely. It's very easy to drive, it's very easy to park. If you want a 360 camera system, you do have to get a higher trim level, but I'm gonna give you guys uh, a couple seconds to hear what this thing sounds like without me talking. motors nice and quiet we're gonna be going over a bridge here so you can hear what that sounds like at about 50 it is very well insulated from the outside world I mean we're going 55 take a listen Very little wind noise, very little road noise, which is always nice, especially in a vehicle. You know, this is just under $40,000. So this isn't like the top of the line, you know, ascent that you can get, or this isn't like the top of the line Kia or so on and so forth. So for $40,000, it is very, very quiet. And honestly, I'm definitely very pleased with the amount of noise that comes in uh, to the cabin because it's not very much. So very happy with that it rides very nicely it goes over bumps nicely um, it's just a joy to drive now I do want to show you what the manual shift mode is like so I'll downshift into like let's say third getting on it so you know paddle shifter response it's okay uh, but I know a lot of Subaru people like to downshift it seems when they're coming up to a stop So let's see what the torque is or the negative torque is like on this motor So it does actually slow you down quite a bit. Here's another little acceleration But if it was me and I was getting this vehicle, uh, you know how many times am I really going to use the manual shift node? You know, probably not that many times. Um, I guess you would be more using it to slow you down because when you get a vehicle like this, 
you know, what do you need paddle shifters for? You know what I mean? Like this isn't a vehicle that really needs paddle shifters, but we'll do a little uh, downshift action here to see how much it'll slow you down. It definitely helps slowing you down. Like especially off the rip when you first get it into uh, lower gear, like it noticeably slows you down uh, when you first hit it. So well, I'll do a little mild acceleration here. I'm gonna keep it in drive. So I'm just gonna let the motor do its thing. And uh, we'll do a little acceleration here. Mild, I'm going to give it 50% throttle. So you can see, very, very good acceleration. I don't feel like this needs any more power. And honestly, I'm very happy with the power level um, that it has. Now, brakes are also good um, when you hit them. They're a very linear feeling brake pedal, which is always nice. Um, you know, sometimes you get in a vehicle and you hit the brakes and it kind of stops you uh, immediately. This has a very linear feeling brake pedal. So overall, this is a great family vehicle. And I think if you're looking for a family vehicle with three rows under $40,000, I would at least give this thing a look. I'm not saying you got to buy it, but at least take a look at it because the driver's seat is very comfortable. Passenger seat is also very comfortable. Uh, second row seats are also comfortable. So uh, just a great great you know vehicle for those of you looking for a nice family three-row vehicle that can also tow a boat um, this is a nice vehicle at you know the just under forty thousand dollar price point but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm now on my journey to a hundred thousand subscribers and i cannot get there without your support so uh, another thing i wanted to say is thank you to each and every one of my 14,000 subscribers. I hit 14,000 subscribers a day or like three days ago. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of my subscribers. You guys are, you know, the reason that I keep going. So thank you so much for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, but again, that's it for today's video. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.